The topic we are going to discuss today is Vokch Koyanagi Harade syndrome. It is an idiopathic multi-system autoimmune disease featuring inflammation of melanocyte containing tissues such as skin, uvea, ear and meninges. VKH predominantly affects Hispanic, Japanese and heavily pigmented individuals usually in the second and the fifth decade of life. It is associated with HLA DR1 and DR4 across different racial groups. VKH is sometimes subdivided into a roped Koyanagi disease characterized by skin changes and arteriovitis and Harada disease in which neurological features and exudative RD predominate. So uh, these two classifications. Now it is uh, uh, differentiated into four phases. The first one, prodromal phase, it lasts a few days and the main organs involved are neurological. So the signs are meningitis, rarely encephalopathy with cranial apparesis and other focal lesion and auditory manifestations. Tinnitus, vertigo and deafness. Cranial nerve palsies and optic neuritis may also occur. Then is the acute uveitic phase. Now here, uvea is the main site of inflammation. So the patient will present with bilateral granulomatous anterior and multifocal posterior uveitis with diffuse choroidal infiltration, dealing Fox nodules, which are RPE sub uh, retinal infiltration. Uh, vitritis, papillitis, and exudative RD. Silvery fusion with iris lens diaphragm rotation can also occur uh, in this case, uh, in the acute UVI type phase. So, one of the things that is the multifocal exudative RD in acute UVI type phase is seen in the diagram here. Then is the convalescent phase, which follows several weeks later. There is localized alopecia, poliosis, and vitiligo. Depigmented fundus appearance, also called sunset glow fundus, and depigmented limbal lesions, sugura sign, and pigmented, especially Japanese patients. Chronic recurrent phase is characterized by smoldering anterior uveitis with exacerbations. Recurrent posterior uveitis is much less common. Now in these two phases as well, you can see that in convalescent phase, the main uh, site of inflammation is either skin or uvea and chronic recurrent phase, the main site is anterior uveitis. This is vitiligo and poliosis in convalescent phase, as you can see, and this is the typical sunset glow fundus area, areas of deep pigmentation in the uh, fundus as seen in the picture. So this is the modified diagnostic criteria for Vokuenagi Harada syndrome. There are five diagnostic uh, features that should be present for complete uh, VKH. Uh, so number one, absence of a history of a penetrating ocular trauma. Number two, absence of other ocular disease entities. So we are ruling out trauma. We are ruling out other ocular disease entities. Number three, there should be bilateral uveitis. Number four, there should be neurological and auditory manifestations. And number five, there should be integumentary findings not preceding the onset of central nervous system or ocular disease such as alopecia, poliosis, and vitiligo. So that is complete VKH. So characteristics uh, one to three, and uh, either four or five should be present for incomplete disease and uh, probable if one to three are present, uh, which is exclusively ocular. Now, ocular complications include choroidal neovascularization, subretinal fibrosis, uh, preretinal, and uh, disc new vessels, and vitreous hemorrhage, cataract, and glaucoma. Prognosis is variable and it's partly dependent on achieving control in the early stages. Neurological and 
auditory manifestations tend to resolve, but skin, lash, and hair changes, uh, they usually persist. Systemic manifestation should be investigated and managed by an appropriate specialist. Lumbar puncture, if diagnosis is uncertain, CSF shows a transient lymphocytic pleocytosis and melanin containing macrophages. Uh, fluorescin, uh, fundus autofluorescin demonstrates areas of serious detachment. Uh, ultrasonography shows diffuse choroidal thickening, excluding posterior varietes. Ultrasonographic biomicroscopy should can be used to demonstrate a severe effusion, and uh, which would be very helpful uh, to rule out other diagnoses. Now, here is a multifocal exudative RD in a Q2B tech phase, and then a fundus autofluorescein showing certain areas of uh, multiple exudative detachment. Then is uh, fluorescein angiography of the acute phase shows multifocal hyperfluorescent dots at the level of retinal pigment, in, uh, pigment epithelium followed by subretinal cooling. The chronic phase shows RPE window defect. So this is uh, in first picture hyperfluorescent dots leaking in the venous phase and then in the end there is pulling of dye and detached areas in the late late phase uh, very clearly visible in the angiography. OCT allows quantification of subretinal fluid, the subretinal septae are typical. Uh, here the OCT of a patient shows uh, first in the first picture upon presentation very high quantity of fluid in the subretinal area upon steroid treatment you can see the reduction in the amount of fluid in the subretinal area uh, and that is after only five days of treatment of uh, five days of cystoid steroid treatment so uh, that is hyper uh, fluid with hyperreflective material then um, uh, fluorescent uh, angiography of acute phase uh, 